Remember the start of book four, where Grandfather said he wanted to go mountain climbing? Yeah, I don't remember that either, but Benny does. Benny never forgets anything. This family is creepy sometimes. Argofonk book review, Argofonk book review. So it's decided that they will all go on a day trip to Flat Top. They hike up the mountain for three hours, then they have lunch on the top. Lunch is hamburgers and bacon, and we're left to assume that they were carrying raw hamburger in their backpacks the whole time, which is disgusting. Also disgusting is the way Grandfather cleans up the meal. He takes the grease and fat and just dumps it off the side of the mountain, probably creating a mess and destroying the beautiful scenery. Grandfather, you're a bad role model. On the way back down the mountain, Benny slips and causes a rock slide. As a result, our heroes are stuck on top of the mountain with no way down. Oh no! Fortunately, Grandfather has an emergency helicopter ready. I'm not joking, Grandfather ordered his lackey, John Carter, to prep the helicopter on the odd chance they would be stranded on top of the mountain. It's almost like Grandfather expected Benny to get them stranded. The helicopter proves to be kind of useless, because instead of rescuing our heroes or giving them food, all it does is drop off some sleeping bags. Everyone goes to sleep when they notice a faint light in the woods. That is our mystery! A random light in the woods. Really scraping the bottle of the mystery barrel here. The next morning, our heroes have leftovers for breakfast, which means Grandfather is drinking coffee mixed with Coke. Whoa, that sounds dangerous. After this, the helicopter takes them down the mountain for real. The park rangers say that the light belongs to an old Indian who lives in the woods. The Indian is Lovan Dixon, a 90-year-old woman who is the last of her tribe. She's sad because she heard a rumor that the government's going to sell the park land. Grandfather says not to worry. He knows a super rich guy who likes to buy land from the government. And yeah, he's talking about himself. He orders his lackey to buy the land. Get to it, John! The landslide uncovered a cave opening. This prompts Lovan to tell an old Indian story about treasure being hidden in the cave. Our heroes go to a motel, where there is a lot of talk about food. Grandfather summons another lackey, a cave explorer named Dr. Osgood. Osgood says it will take three days of staging before they can explore the cave. And nah, he's lying. They explore the cave later that day. At the store, our heroes notice an Indian boy hanging around. They find this suspicious, because Lovan is supposed to be the only Indian in the area. Once again, Grandfather sends John Carter to take care of the issue, while they watch the staging and eat food. It takes a few chapters before they find the Indian boy. He is David Walker, and it turns out he's related to Lovan. He came here to find the hidden treasure in the cave. Speaking of which, the staging is done now. Everyone enters the cave, and Benny finds the treasure. It's mostly old French silver. When David and Lovan are introduced to each other, they become great friends, both of them happy that they're no longer orphans, the last members of their tribe. They decide to live together, and they work to preserve their culture for future generations. It's actually a very sweet ending. The end. Postbook follow-up? Benny's a little over-enthusiastic in this book. Instead of talking normally, he shouts and yells most of his dialogue. I read this book out loud to my stepdaughter, so I noticed it. Benny needs a volume control. Another reviewer pointed out that this book has the typical boxcar children identity mystery, where our heroes have to learn who someone is. Why didn't I notice that before? It happens in every book! And usually the issue is resolved when our heroes talk to the mysterious stranger. That's why they don't do a lot of investigation in this mystery series. It's mostly just, who is that guy? Oh, who is he? 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 For five chapters and then... Hey, sir, who are you? Oh, we figured out who he is! We solved the mystery! Yay! Overall, I enjoyed this book. It had a nice pace and no filler chapters. Sure, there were some scenes which could have been removed, but nothing which felt like it was purposeful time-wasting. There was a good moral about respecting Indian culture and a surprisingly emotional scene with Benny and Grandfather after Benny almost fell to his death. There's not much room for improvement here. 
I give Boxcar Children number 9, Mountaintop Mystery, a 9 out of 10.